Yeah, hold on just a second. You're not gonna be able to see what I actually injection molded before you spend the time to see how we actually built our DIY injection molder. Uh, this one is specifically the Mark III from Buster Beagle, and I'll link to that down below. So here's a little time-lapse and um, overview of what that process looked like. One thing to note is as you're assembling the frame, as you'll see here, um, you always wanna make sure that you leave some of the hardware a little bit loose. So as you square it up, and then you'll see me using a tape measure here in a second, you want to be able to move the frame to make sure everything is square and in the right place. And after you get your mold set up, you might actually have to raise or lower that um, entire piston and assembly. I made some very good progress on the Buster Beagle Mark III injection molding machine. A couple observations to note. Um, everything went together just as explained in the video or in the uh, assembly guide. I can link to that down below. Yeah, so with the heater band, highly recommend the outside sheath. Drill a hole in that first. I rotated it so this is almost square to the front, and then I rotated my barrel actually a little bit. I loosened these screws under here, rotated the barrel so I could have this aiming pretty much at the front. I still have to adjust this um, sleeve there. Um, but make sure you are not drilling through the heater bands. If you can see, there is still the gap there, and your thermistor is still going through that gap. Um, other things to note I noticed there's a little rock in this, so I can get that to tilt. Here. So what I tried to do is I tried to loosen all of my brackets and it started to settle pretty flat. And then I just took some Craig screws and screwed it to a thick three quarter inch piece of MDF thinking that would stabilize it while I tightened everything up. And then I retightened everything after it was stable and I squared everything up and it was still rocking. So if anyone has any suggestions, please put that in the comments down below. Um, <clears throat> other points are when you're assembling, these are kind of your indicating positions from the front to back. Everything in the instructions doesn't really show you how far apart this should be, but if you go ahead and get these pretty tight on there with this big aluminum plate that comes from Buster Beagle, um, and make sure that this rod and this rod are parallel, then you can go ahead and measure from that to that and then you position these appropriately. And then if you want the whole thing, these legs here can be uh, slid into the exact right position. Uh, one other point um, that I wanna make is actually assembling these guys. So the other thing I'm having issues with right now, in addition, it's probably related to this, this rocking that we have going on here. Um, but when this piston comes down, it is about a 16th of an inch off concentric with this. And that just shifts it over. I mean, the whole thing's a little bit flexible, but I've tried adjusting these up and down. And if I just manually tilt this, I can do it. And I know I need to tighten that up a little bit. Um, but even when I squared everything off here and made it sure it was all exactly the right length. Now, maybe these rods are slightly different lengths, but even when I adjusted things to try and get it in true, it seems like it's parallel because the piston goes down into the barrel fine and back out fine. But um, it's when I try and get it so it hits that top ring fine, if I skew it a little bit, the piston starts sticking because it's not parallel anymore. So that's another one. 
Um, when starting the adjustments, I gotta figure out the final adjustments, but if it's moving really slowly, these are valves, so you can adjust the valves here, and that helps you adjust the speed at which the piston goes down depending on the size of your compressor and the pressure that you're running at. I still have one T-nut and three screws, so I'm trying to figure out where they are. I know I'm not completely done I'm trying to figure out what I missed there. But when it comes to these guys, these are one of the last steps of the frame assembly. What I highly recommend, because this is the only way I could do it without creating an absolute disaster, is you actually put the screws through the plate and then you do about half a turn or one turn of the T-nut going onto that. So once you do that, you can take this and if you align everything correctly, which I did not, Those two go that way, these three go that way. You can take that and you put it on like that. Now that sits perfectly. You're not having any T-nuts sliding down. I'm gonna see if I can position this here so we can film it a little bit. And then when tightening these, I try and jiggle it a little bit, just move it back and forth while rotating and up and down just a little bit to make sure that that T is not stuck against that back edge and it can actually grab the frame. And then I felt the whole frame tighten up a little bit on that one. So that one we're good. So hopefully I'll speed this up for your sake, but I just kind of want to show you the process for getting one of these in because it makes life a whole lot easier. <laughs> a mechanical other than the vise being clamped in this thing is ready to rock and roll so come with me we're gonna see if it explodes ready okay so that's on so the first thing you want to do with the rex c100 uh, pid controller um, is we're gonna go ahead and hold set we're gonna go to auto-tune, if that's on the AR0, ARU is the auto-tune. We're gonna go set that to one, click set. And then even if we go out, see my set point now is 200 degrees. I believe this is Celsius. My current temp is 38 degrees Celsius. But <laughs> I know everything looks like it's blinking, but these are just the uh, PWM flashing uh, pulse width modulation. So. This AT is indeed flashing. That shows that while this is heating up to the 200, it is actually determining how fast the heater bands will heat up and cool down. So the auto-tune setup uh, basically controls that PID controller to balance the wavelength there to make sure that you're not kicking on and off that heater more than you need and making sure you do kick it on when you need to kick it on. It basically tells the computer how fast does this mass heat up or cool down? So that's that. Um, we're pretty good. Let's get that vice on 
and uh, unfortunately, my mold is empty. So that's one of my next projects, is actually taking a part I have designed and creating it to fit in this guy. So join me on that one too. So in the next video, I'll be going through how to uh, finish the design of your part. If you have something simple, even a cylinder. I had a previous part I was working on and have been 3D printing for years, but adding draft to it, figuring out how to use Boolean objects to, or processes to remove it from the mold design, uh, how to 3D print it, failures on 3D printing, how to insert it into the mold, how to fail printing it again, <laughs> how to get it into the mold, and ultimately how to get a decent looking part out of it and lessons learned and how to move to the next one. If you would consider liking and subscribing, if there's any part of this that you would enjoy seeing more of, I would greatly appreciate it. We'll see you on the next one.